So uh, let me just show you the design of the Neuralto trial. This was a trial uh, that was in, in fact designed to explore whether dual her to blockade using trastuzumab and lapatinib would induce higher rates of pathological complete responses in women with HER2 positive breast cancer compared to single HER2 blockade using either trastuzumab or lapatinib. The trial was conducted in 455 women with tumors larger than two centimeter and assessed as locally HER2 positive following the ASCO-CAP guidelines of 2007. Uh, these women came from uh, 86 institutions in 23 countries and five continents. As you can see, the trial had uh, three parallel treatment groups, oral lapatinib at the dose of 1500 milligrams daily, or intravenous trastuzumab, or the combination of these two targeted agents with a slightly reduced dose of lapatinib, given for six weeks, and then followed by an additional 12 weeks of the assigned anti her treatment given in combination with weekly paclitaxel. After surgery, patients receive three cycles of intracycline-based chemotherapy, three cycles of FEC, followed by the same targeted therapy as the one given in the neoadjuvant phase. Of note, women uh, who had hormone receptor positive cancers started adjuvant endocrine treatment at that time. At this conference three years ago, Dr. Bazelga reported the results regarding the primary endpoint of this trial, namely pathological complete response in the breast, in other terms, complete disappearance of invasive breast cancer in the breast. And as you can see, women, given the combination of lapatinib and trastuzumab, had a significantly higher pathological complete response rate. When we looked separately at the two subgroups according to hormone receptor status, you see that the most striking results were achieved in women with hormone receptor negative disease. And there you can see that these women achieved a pathological complete response rate as high as 61% with the combination of the two targeted drugs in comparison with 36% with trastuzumab alone, which is still the standard of care. So clearly, the critical question is whether or not the incremental gain in PCR observed with dual heart to blockade will translate into <coughs> improved event-free survival and overall survival. So I need to give some important definitions here because now in accordance with FDA recommendation, when I'm going to talk about PCR, I'm now going to refer to no invasive disease in the breast and in the axilla. Event-free survival events are defined as differently for patients who did or did not undergo breast cancer surgery. Of course, the majority of patients did undergo breast cancer surgery. For those, event-free survival events consist in post-surgery breast cancer recurrences, second primary cancers, and death. For the 28 patients who did not undergo breast cancer surgery, these events consist in regional or distant progression or secondary primary cancer during neoadjuvant treatment or death during clinical follow-up. Now, it's very important to remember that the NEOALTO trial is not powered to look at survival differences. The curves I'm showing here are therefore intended to be descriptive. What you can see here is the event-free survival curve for the entire population and in green, the upper curve refers to dual her to blockade and the two other curves to single her to blockade. The hazard ratio is 0.78, so there is a 22% reduction in the risk of an event, but of course, this is not statistically significant. Please note that the three-year event-free survival rates are 84% for women receiving the combination 76% for women treated with trastuzumab. 
We did an analysis according to hormone receptor status, and this analysis is very interesting because it suggests that the divergence of the curves is much more pronounced in the hormone receptor negative HER2 positive subgroup, where there could well be a possible treatment effect. Overall survival, well, we have very few events at this point in time, so these analyses uh, do not show very much, as you can see. And the same is true for analysis according to hormone receptor status. Now, interestingly, we did look at the association between pathological complete response independently from the treatment arm and event-free survival. And you can see that we could very nicely confirm that women who achieve a PCR, the red curve, have a much improved event-free survival as compared to those who do not achieve a PCR. And here we are talking about a hazard ratio of 0.38, so a reduction in the risk of an event by 62%. The p-value is statistically significant, 0.0003. Again, when we do an analysis according to hormone receptor status, we do see a much bigger divergence of the curves in the hormone receptor negative patients. The hazard ratio there is 0.34, and the p-value is statistically significant. Overall survival by PCA, we also see a very strong association significant. We see a much bigger treatment effect in hormone receptor negative disease. So the conclusions are that first of all patients who achieved <coughs> PCR had significantly better event-free survival and overall survival compared with no PCR. This was from a landmark <coughs> analysis. I can go back to that, if you wish, later on. Now, very importantly, the NEOALTO trial was powered to detect PCR differences, and it met its primary endpoint. It did show a significant improvement in PCR for dual HER2 blocking. <coughs> it was not powered to detect moderate differences in event-free survival and overall survival. It is the very large ALTO trial with the recruitment of 8,300 women that will provide a robust answer on the effect of dual HER2 blockade on long-term outcome, and we expect this trial to report results at ASCO next year. At approximately four-year median follow-up and in line with previous observations by other investigators, a dual HER2 blockade appears to provide superior benefit in terms of PCR, event-free survival, overall survival, in patients with HER2-positive hormone receptor negative disease. A follow-up analysis of NEOALTO is planned in 2.5 years. It is possible that with longer follow-up, we will also see a bigger treatment effect in the hormone receptor positive subgroup. But clearly, this trial provides further evidence that HER2-positive hormone receptor negative and HER2-positive hormone receptor positive subgroups are two different diseases. In terms of adverse events, I had no time to show that to you today, but there were no surprises. They were consistent with the known safety profile of lapatinib and trastuzumab.